Yeah, what's up, y'all? I'm back with another video. It's RC Talks About Basketball. Back in the building. I'm going to talk on this video about the Miami Heat. We're going to talk about the season overview and the future outlook. Y'all know how we do it. And before we get started, let me bring it back one time. Y'all see me out here grinding. Y'all know what I'm doing. Y'all see me out here grinding. It's what's for winners. So let's go. The Miami Heat, they finished last season 44-38 and 38 in the Eastern Conference. They would make the play-in. They would lose to the Atlanta Hawks the first game, but they would beat the Chicago Bulls and enter the NBA playoffs Eastern Conference as an eight seed. And we all thought they would be hitting the road after they met the Milwaukee Bucks in round one. But that did not transpire. Did that of which did not occur. What did transpire was the Miami Heat came out like world beaters after Yontes Antia Kumbo got hurt. Jimmy Butler decided to go nuts like planners. Jimmy Butler's lo- Jimmy Butler. I said Jimmy Butler's at first, but it, it's like it was five Jimmy Butler's out there because Jimmy Butler just took over. Um, never did he shine as hard as he did throughout the playoffs as he did against the Bucks. I mean, we could say maybe at times against the Knicks, but he, you know, he sprained his ankle and, um, you know, that was that, you know, but he, he bounced back from that as well. But, Jimmy Buckets was lights out against the Bucks, and um, they were able to surprise them and take them out in five games. And from there, Miami just kept the good luck rolling. They just kept on rolling. They rolled through the Knicks. Um, they almost blew it against the Celtics. Um, I think they took the foot off the gas a couple of those games, let the Celtics back in. But all playoffs long, you know, the the, the – the, uh, The Miami Heat would persevere and get all the way to the NBA Finals with uh, great contributions from, of course, Jimmy. But Max Struess, he contributed. Uh, What's the guy's name? Gabe Vincent, he contributed big time. Bam Adebayo was really balling at times. Um, This was a Miami Heat team on a mission. Hard workers determined to get theirs. And what it did was... It gave Max Struess and gave Vincent nice, nice paydays um, at the end. But more than anything, the, the Miami Heat culture capitalized again um, to be only like, what was it, the, the, the second eighth seed to get to an NBA Finals, the first since the New York Knicks did it in the 1999 lockout season. That team back in the day, which was led by Spreewell and Allen Houston and Marcus Camby, um, you could say that this team was was hard and driven just like that team. This Heat team really, really came out and uh, just took it, you know, during the playoffs to their opponents. Now, during the course of the season, the Heat, you know, they 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 either rode a roller coaster of inconsistency or they were saving it. Players like Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry, you know, saving it for the playoffs. And I, and I don't know which is which. But I do know that this Miami Heat team made a miraculous run to get to the NBA Finals where it ended to the Denver Nuggets. Uh, and I just think they just ran out of gas. And I just think, you know, the Denver Nuggets was was just trying to guarantee that when the, when the Heat got to that Finals that, hey, Cinderella, you ain't leaving in your glass slippers. You leaving in a hoodie. And they just basically took, took care of them. And, you know, they, they definitely have more talent than Nuggets did. But all in all, I think the Heat season was a success if they, um, you know, were able to go from the eight seed, which I, I always said eight seed, great seed when they were showing out and showing up. But I think the season was still a success. But what I, what I don't like for the Miami Heat is just when they got to the finals, Jimmy Butler wasn't as dominant looking as he was throughout the playoffs. 
And I just think maybe it was a combination of uh, weariness, just wearing down from carrying the team so much, even though he had tons of help. Um, his ankle was sprained, so maybe that's catching up to him, perhaps. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying. But, you know, this Miami Heat team, I failed to mention Caleb Martin. He was also a key contributor. Um, he didn't show up in the finals. But, you know, end of the day, the Miami Heat, they had a pretty nice season. Um, considering, um, you know, what could have been they you know, they could have missed the playoffs, but they made the playoffs. And in the end of the day, when you make the playoffs, you, you get a chance. It felt like a NCAA tournament type of run for this Miami Heat team. Um, but hey, brilliant job to the Miami Heat. Um, really, really just persevered through the season. That's the perfect word. Um, Jimmy Butler at 33, you know, he's going to need some help. Um, and I and I and that's what we're going to talk about right now. Uh, Damian Lillard wants to go to the Miami Heat, guys. Um, but there has been not much traction going on. And, and the holdup is maybe they just don't have enough. And I think the truth of the matter is they don't have enough to get a deal done. Like Nikola Jovic, one letter away from being Nikola Jokic um, in terms of name, it's not enough. Tyler Hero... It's not enough. Duncan Robinson, it's not enough to get a trade done. So, you know, what will Miami do? Will they be able to get other teams involved? Maybe a third team? What what are they going to do here? Because they definitely need another superstar. Jimmy Butler is a superstar. But I just think he's not your number one option type of of player. And that's no knock on Jimmy. He really lit it up. I give him all the props for that. Um, he can really do his thing out there. Um, but I'm just wondering, like, is can does Miami have a road, a path to get to Damian Lillard on the heat? And even so, will you give up too much? And they still need a big man. Like, Bam is fine, but they need a, a, a big man that can do the dirty work. Can that be time, Thomas Bryant, who they acquired? Will uh, Thomas Bryant really go and play some minutes for the Heat? And will he really be able to contribute for this team? It's interesting to see if he will. Um, he got his championship ring last season with the Denver Nuggets, but he didn't really, you know, have any effect on them winning. Um, so... I'm just curious, you know, to see what this Miami Heat team will do going forward. In the draft, they were able to pick up Jaime Hawkins uh, from UCLA. I'm a, I'm a big UCLA fan. He's a he's a really hardworking guy, scrappy, um, savvy player. He's going to contribute in any way that he can. So that's a really good pickup if they don't end up packaging him in a deal for Damian Lillard. I just I'm just wondering, like I said. The Miami Heat's future is pretty much predicated upon them getting another superstar. Otherwise, they're going to be a team that just keeps maxing out as a 6 seed, 7 seed, 8 seed, just in my opinion. You know, do I think this team, as it's constituted, is good enough to get back to the NBA Finals? No, I don't think so. Everybody's making moves. Everybody's making trades. Thomas Bryant and Jaime Hawk has nice pickups. But I don't think it's enough to get you to, you know, back to the NBA Finals in the Eastern Conference that's rapidly improving. Um, you see in Boston go out and make moves, make changes, you know. So you see Milwaukee bringing it, running it back, but also, you know, improving in terms of getting uh, seasoned uh, rookies in the draft and able to get uh, – Milwaukee was able to bring in uh, Malik Beasley and they was able to bring back Jay Crowder and they also they was able to get – Brooke Lopez, his brother, Robin Lopez. So Miami just has to, uh, I mean, it was able to re-sign Brooke Lopez, but Miami has to find a way to get a secondary superstar, be it Damian Lillard, Paul George, Joel Embiid. They got to get somebody to take the scoring off of Jimmy, especially now that Max Struess has went to Cleveland and uh, Gabe Vincent has went to L.A. So I look forward to uh, this Miami Heat team seeing what they got to give us, what kind of where they come out next season. You know, Duncan Robinson was able to have a nice playoff showing. So, you know, he finally was able to get back into good graces. What will Tyler Hero look like next season? Because he's been, his name has been thrown in trade. So it's interesting because if, if Damian Lillard gets traded to Miami, 
I'm going to have to do an updated team segment or I'm going to just have to talk more Miami Heat because if that happens, you know, I'll be back in a flash. So, yeah, with that being said, guys, this is pretty – wait, 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 hold up, slow up. Uh, my prediction for the Miami Heat. Obviously, if they get Damian Lillard, I'm going to change this. I'm going to come back, drop a short and change my record prediction. But I feel like if – if everything holds the form, if they trying to run it back with kind of what they have, um, looking because this is an organization that can always find players. Pat Riley, you know, the GOAT in the front office, Eric Stolstra, an outstanding, legendary coach in his own right. I, I feel like this team next season, I, I got them going at like, I'm going to say they go 47-35 couple of wins above what they had this season so let me know what you guys think your prediction for the heat if you enjoyed this video i appreciate you for watching um if you're a subscriber or you just somebody viewing this because you're a heat fan go ahead and subscribe more content is coming with that being spoken i'm out of here peace